blessing to see, to hear, to smell, to yeah. taste. Thank God for everything. Yeah. I don't take it for granted. Yes, All the blessings. If you bow your head and close your eyes, it is my honor to go take you to the throne of God. After that, we'll have the prayer chant and the scripture by Brother Toby as you go it. Thank you, Lord.
I can promote it now. And then after that, we will call upon the youth and young adults for our Black History Moment. Good morning, Georgia. Good morning. John 15, 1 to 5, verse 2. I am the true vine, and my Father is the garden. He takes away every branch that does not bear fruit in me. He prunes every branch that bears fruit so that it will bear more fruit. You are clean already because of the word that I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, the less it remains in the vine, so you will give me a less to remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches, the one who remains in me. Uh, and I am in it, there is no fruit, because apart from me, you can accomplish nothing. My father is honored by this, that you can bear much fruit, and so that you are my disciples. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's now come time in our service for our Black History Moment. Uh, we will have Brother Terrence. Um, Brother Cole Hughes and Zoe Hughes to come forward um, to read on their respective um, African Americans who African Americans who paved the way for us. <clears throat> for today's Black History Moment, we highlight those who have contributed in the areas of architecture, entertainment, and sports. Please come forward.
joy from the joy of the Lord.
Do we have any visitors with us today? If so, would you please stand? Amen.
take a moment to speak to all the men out there that on Facebook or in here. If you know a brother that's left the church for whatever reason, the past is the past. We, it's a new shift now. We're moving in a different direction. Amen? And so tell them to come back. Definitely on that Saturday when we have uh, March 2nd. Tell them to come on back. Come on. Y'all know where they are. Tell them to come on back. Come on back. Come on back and see what the Lord is getting ready to do. Amen? Amen. Y'all inside. I didn't get a good amen out of that. I didn't get a good amen out of that. But when they come marching in, that's when things don't shift up in here. Amen. 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 I was uh, at the Reed Temple Men's uh, Retreat yesterday, and, they, and Pastor Washington said, it wasn't until the men grabbed a hold of the love of the Lord that the church caught on fire. So it's not going to be till the men grab a hold of the love of the Lord. It's all right to shout and it's all right to run. And the men like to be taught. They like to be challenged. They like to feel wanted. And so we're going to have to invite them back up in here. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Um, it's all right to run. It's all right to shout. It's all right to cry. But we got to get our men back. Hallelujah. I'm going to get off that. I'm going to get off that. Now, after service, don't y'all, uh, I'm going to stay away. I got something. I don't want to give it to y'all, amen? Uh, but I got something I don't want to give it to you. So I won't be doing any hugging and all that stuff, and, but y'all just hug on each other, okay? The last thing I want to say um, before we go out and hug each other is, um, what's that I was going to say? Uh-oh, oh, might be getting the, um, everything's stepping in. No, but, uh, no, I want to say Angie, that's what I want to say. Stand up, Angie, stand up, stand up. Come on, give an answer. You know, the reason, I, um, the reason I asked you to stand up is because um, uh, your father shared with me a, a letter or an email or something you wrote to the church in 1997, probably. And what I want to know is that at a, as a child, she had the gift of prophecy. It was very prophetic. You said that the youth wanted these things. Amen? And we're going to, and, and so, but God's going to bring them to pass. And one, you did say that the youth wanted to evangelize. They want to tell others about Jesus. Amen? Amen, amen. So even in that year, 1997, she was prophesying of what's about to come to pass. Amen? Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap. Sunday. Come on now. It, it's just some blessings. You know, the signs, wonders, and miracles going to fall up in here. Uh, some folks going to get healed. Uh, I just believe it. I believe God. Some folks going to get saved. Uh, some folks going to get set free. Uh, some folks going to get delivered. What they going to get delivered from? From the mess that's in their life. God's going to do it. He's going to do it. God's going to do it. Oh, yes, he is. Some folks going to walk again. Uh, some folks going to see again. Uh, some folks going to get different again. Uh, I come out of Talk to somebody today and let somebody know that Jesus is still Lord and he's still on the throne. And I'm just praying and I'm going to believe that he'll do a radical thing up in here. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise.
come and just, you know, this is all right. They come on around. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all get, I want y'all to do me a favor. At these young people are, are happy. It's 
it's been a while, but um, on July of uh, 26, 1962, uh, I was born in a, a hospital in a small town, Georgia. They still use the word color, C-O-L-O-R-E-D, for race. It's colored. I was colored on my birth certificate. And, but my journey, uh, Sister Shanae, didn't start there. My mother actually went into labor early July 25th. I didn't want to come out. She strained and strained and strained and suffered with me. And, and I didn't want to come out. And then she told me, when I finally came out, Brother DeMarco, when I finally came out, that's back, I didn't say anything. And that was back in the days where the doctors spanked you. So he hit me once, nothing. Twice, nothing. Third time, finally start crying. My mother suffered long in labor. She got the marks. It messed with her kidneys. She suffered long with me. And with my sister, it was a different story. She came out yelling. She came out moving. So we're different children, seven years apart, but different. she suffered long. She carried me into what I want to call overtime. Overtime. But it was late in the midnight hour when she began to pray. And, and that morning, finally that morning on the 26th, I, I was born, but she carried me a long time. And, and, and I have to say this, that, that, that with my sister, she had relatively no problem. Well, she'll say she had all the problems, but because she talked all the time. Uh, and, but, um, but with me, just like she suffered long when she carried me, it was a long suffering because she saw the potential in me. But I wouldn't live up to the potential. So I would spend her money. I would always think that she could get me out of trouble. I wouldn't pay my rent. I would let two, three months of rent back up and then she would pay it. And long suffering for many wrinkles and many, I probably took a lot of days off her life. And so, and so what, where we are with the fruit of the Spirit, we can talk about loving and about the joy of the Lord. And we can talk about peace that passes all understanding. These are easy out of the nine characteristics that are in the Bible, but long-suffering is the only one that's going to agitate you. All right. All right. Some biblical versions, you, you read the version, you click on Google and go down, they don't use the word long-suffering anymore, they use patience. But patience means to tolerate you. Long-suffering is endurance and being steadfast under provocation. In other words, Long suffering is when someone gets on your last nerve and you still have to smile and be kind to them. You practice long suffering when somebody is just messing with you. How many of y'all got family members that get on your last nerve? How many of y'all got people on your job that get on your last nerve? Let's tell the truth, but don't raise your hand in here. How many of y'all got church members that get on your last nerve? It's not patience that we need. Lord have mercy, we got to have the Holy Ghost to bring us long suffering. Long suffering. I'm gonna teach a little bit of uh, uh, Brother Don. Long suffering. Long, long suffering. It's long suffering before you get the benefit. You got to experience some pain. That's what happened in the pregnancy. Before she got the benefit of life, she had to experience the pain. You got to be agitated. That's just the way it's set up. You got to be agitated. And God, then God strips us down through long suffering and builds us up with compassion. The fruit of long suffering helps us through the toughest situations, brings us through situations that build our faith. And when we come out of situations, we should come out stronger. Long suffering really shows you who God is. Right. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. late in the midnight hour. We in the Old Testament book of Isaiah, and, 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 and that's a book of, of Isaiah in three sections. Chapters 1 through 35 are prophetic. 
with the theme of condemnation, how the how the, 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 the Israelites and how they were being condemned and, and how they had so much sin and, and, and this is going to happen and ruin is going to happen. But then in chapters 40 through 66, it shifts. And, and 40 is your chapter of consolation, comfort, show you strength. In other words, God will take you through and, and, and be there with you, but you got to go through some stuff. So, so for 39 chapters, they went through some mess and mess, and they were going through, and God was still there with them, and then God started to speak to them in chapter 40. Just remember, no matter how folks get on your nerves, God is greater than our circumstances. God is greater. In order to get long-suffering, down on the inside of us, I got three points. Point number one, we got to have confidence in God's power and wisdom. If you look at Isaiah 40, 27 through 28, why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary, his understanding is unsearchable. Instead of praising the Lord, the nation of Israel was complaining. That's nothing new. They were complaining all the time, right? They brought them out of the land of Egypt. They complained. And across the Red Sea, they were complaining. Everywhere they were, just complaining. They were acting as if God didn't know their situation of having any concern for their problems. God knows your situation. God knows your problems. Understanding the greatness and glory of God persuades us that there is nothing in our life, nothing in our life hidden from God. And there is nothing neglected by God. Sometimes we believe, we believe God is this almighty, infinite, powerful God. But at the same time, we still believe God is unable to meet our personal needs. The people only saw the long road ahead of them, the Israelites. Uh, and God was asking them to let him do the impossible. And I come by to talk to somebody at St. Stephen's and said, in spite of everything you've gone through in this church, God is still calling us to do the impossible. God can make any situation whole because he neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. God loves and wants us to understand long-suffering because it brings about confidence in God's power and God's wisdom. The Bible tells us in Matthew 19, 26, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. In other words, if you hold on and hold out late in the midnight hour, God's going to what? Turn it around. And God will give you long suffering. Tap your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. late in the midnight hour. Late in the midnight hour. Turn to the other neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. it's going to get a little bit better. Yeah. In order to get long suffering down on the inside of you, point number two, God wants to give us his great power. Right. God wants to give us something. Do we want to receive it? Yeah. Well. Look what the Bible says in Isaiah 40, 29 and 30. He gives power to the weak. Yes. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Notice who God gives power to. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases their strength. Yes. Those who are proud and confident in their own wisdom and strength will receive nothing from God. Right. Paul, Paul, Paul was agitated. He, 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 he wanted God to do something for him when he was talking to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians. And, and he had a thorn in his side. And, and, and he didn't know why it was there. And, 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 and the Bible says, he says, and, and God said to him, Your, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast, this is what Paul says, in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake. But here's the key. Paul said, for when I am weak, then I am strong. But the thorn, the thorn, this thing get me. This thing is just a fan that preaches this thorn. How are you going to have a thorn 
around there. You know, we believe in name and they claim it now. We believe in laying hands and the healing comes right away. How are you going to have a thorn, the thorn in my side and not remove it? Paul, who started all the churches. Paul, who was on Damascus Road. Paul, who was the, probably the greatest one after Jesus. Paul came. And, and how are you not going to remove this thorn? The thorn was an agitator in Paul's side. What does, what does an agitator do? What does an agitator do? I'm glad you asked. Because I had to do some research. Google is good for this. When you wash clothes, you put your clothes in the washing machine, then the soap powder, and then the bleach. There's one thing in the washing machine that will make the dirt come out of the clothes. That one thing in the washing machine is called an agitator. And it produces action that shakes the clothes around and swirls the water around so the dirt is taken out. In other words, long-suffering in our spirit acts as the agitator to get the dirt out of our lives. And I come out and talk to somebody today and tell them that God is trying to do a new thing, but you got to get the dirt out of your lives. I come out and talk to somebody today and tell you God is trying to shift some things, but you need an agitator because God is shaking some things up. And when you get the dirt out of your lives, then you can get your finances right. And when we get the dirt out of our lives, we can get our attitudes right. And when you get the dirt out of our lives, we can get our thoughts right. But late in the midnight hour, God is going to what? Turn it around and around. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, late in the midnight hour. Tap the other neighbor and say, neighbor, God will turn tragedy into triumph. I feel a little bit better right here. I feel a little bit better right here. In order to get the long suffering, in order to get the long suffering, we got to we gotta have confidence in God's power and wisdom. We got to let God give us his power. And then we got to wait on the Lord. That's it. That's where we are right now. We got to wait on the Lord. And y'all know the scripture. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Well, how do we receive the strength from the Lord? We receive strength from the Lord when we wait on the Lord. But the idea of wait is not passively sitting and waiting. The Lord wants us to do something. In other words, we don't sit down and don't do anything while we're waiting on the Lord. We plan it. Y'all know we need more space up in here. We don't sit back and do nothing. We start planning. Y'all know you didn't get your church the way you wanted it the last time. We don't sit back and do nothing. We go ahead and start planning. And yes, God will begin to give us strength. And he'll begin to pour into us. And he'll begin as we seek him. He'll bring us strength. And if we're weak, we got to wait on the Lord. But we also told that he will renew our strength. He will renew our strength. That word renew is a word that means change. It's a word that means to put on fresh. It's a word that can keep putting on fresh. In other words, he really renews our strength. Day by day, he renews our strength. Monday, I got too much weight on me. But God renews our strength. Tuesday, I got a lot of weight on me. I can't pay my bills. And God continues to renew my strength. And then the Bible says, they shall mount up like wings. This is a measure of strength that the Lord gives to us. So the Lord wants us to take off and soar like in the, like the eagle does. And they shall run and not be weary. And walk and not faint. This is the purpose of strength. Strength is to move forward and to progress. Strength is never to sit still. St. Stephen's, I want to let you know you got a pastor that's not want to sit still. We can't sit still just because so many people got saved this year. We got to get more people saved next year. We got to get more people healed next year. You can't sit still. But I want to tell you something, Brother Tom, this 
this what messed me up. This what messed me up, and I'm almost done. This what messed me up. Notice the order. Notice the order, preachers. Notice the order, because it seems strange to me. Notice the order. First, he said, we mount up on wings like eagles. So we soar first. Then he says, we run and not be weary. So then we run. And then he says, we shall walk and not faint. It seems out of order to me. <laughs> he wants us to soar first, then run and then walk. It, it, it seems to me we would walk first, run, and then soar. But, 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 but if we recognize that what, what he said in the scriptures, <laughs> we recognize that we soar up in the heavenly places. <laughs> In Christ Jesus. That's where we soar. So you got to be in Christ Jesus first. That's why he says soar. And Ephesians 2 and 6 says, But God has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. And then he gets to the run. Now watch the run. Because we already soar. And that's our strength. But watch the run. And he says run. Therefore we set ourselves on a course to run the race. Because you already got the mindset that you sit with Christ Jesus. And now you can run. What do you mean we can run? You can run and get that job that you want to. You can run and get that house that you want to. You can run and get that mate that you want to. But I'm not talking just about that. You can run and let your faith get better. You can run and let your healing get better. And that's how you run. You run the race. And Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnared us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So then he wants us to run. First we soar. Then he wants us to run. And we got great clouds of witnesses. Y'all read Hebrews 12. And he went down the line and he says this one and this one. But I want to make it personal. Right here in this church you got great clouds of witnesses. You got the Lewis family. You got the Matthews family. You got this family and that family. That's a great cloud of witnesses. The young adults that were up here. That's a great cloud of witnesses. And then watch. Then he says now. After you take off and soar. And after you run the race. Then you got the, you're in a good place now. Guess what? To walk the walk. Just don't talk it. Walk the walk. Colossians 2 and 6 says, As therefore you have received Christ Jesus in the Lord, so walk in Him. So walk in Him. So I got to tell this and I'm gone. Uh, St. Stephen's, every time I think about this, I think about the buildings that the church almost lost. I think about everything that people were saying about St. Stephen's. I think about all the folks that gave up on St. Stephen's. But guess what? That was just our agitator. That was our agitator. They need to come in and shake the dirt off of us. And I came out to tell you today, start to walk with him. He turns what man meant for a tragedy, he'll turn it around for a triumph. When you get a bad doctor's report, walk with him. When you can't pay your bills, walk with him. When people have
yours. And my thoughts are your thoughts. Can I close it with the Bible? Can I close it with the Bible? Gotta preach the word? Can I close it with the Bible? Hang in there with God. Suffer long. Hold on. Because the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday.
where we may be. It's a different kind of altar call. I want to quit and go eat soul food. I have y'all been going to eat soul food. But that's not what the Lord is saying. There's somebody else that wants to give their life to Christ or join this church. And if that's you, you can come at any time. But here's what he told me. As I am, I need you to put the mics down and come right here. Line up across the altar. I'm not going to do it today. I'm on. The Holy Ghost resides on everybody. Amen. Sister, we ain't finished yet. Sister Candace, come here. You come on this end. My sister that's visiting, come here. Amen. You come right here on this end. God pointed me out, you out to me because y'all are young. We all been there. You're going through a lot. Yeah, yeah. You're juggling children, family, school, mess, and just the world situation. But God has a special gift for each of you. That's why He keeps bringing you back Sunday after Sunday, a third Sunday after third Sunday. He's getting ready to do something that you've never seen before. I guarantee He's going to do it. Just like I promised them that, promised you all that God said, and not me, that Sister Joyce is going to walk. Amen. This year Amen. is your year of increase. And it's all going to be on the inside. And once it matures on the inside, it's going to bound on the outside. More folks are going to be drawn to you this year because they're going to see Christ more in you. It's going to break down balls and barriers and strongholds that you've been trying to navigate yourself. Only God can do it. I'm going to ask uh, Reverend Chanel if she would anoint each and every one of you all. And uh, do, you, do me a favor. Brothers, uh, where's some bride? Come on, brother Kevin. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, Reverend Chanel. Hold on a minute. Because I, 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 don't, I don't want this to be a quick thing. So, I need another brother Sam. Brother Sam. Y'all stand behind me. Here's the thing. This is not some type of one, two, three, and it happens. Inside of you, you must surrender to me. So when she gets ready to anoint you, we're going to start right here. I want you to give your hands open. Just like we surrender to the police, you know. Surrender. Close your eyes and think on Jesus. And then... God will do something on the inside of you today. All right, go ahead. That's the first one. Raise your hand and surrender. Close your eyes and think on Jesus. It's not about hand touching. It's not about the all. But God is trying to do something in these young people today. And if we don't take a moment and anoint them, then the, then the streets will try to grab a hold of them. Y'all let the hands go. Don't touch each other's hands. Y'all let each other. It's a, this individual thing right here. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, in the name of Jesus, I feel healing on your life. In the name in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, yes, there it is, in the name of Jesus, call it out, in the, you've been wrestling too long, struggling too long, you might as well let it come out, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, 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 next one, surrender, open up arms up and surrender to it, in the name of Jesus, it's your season, it's, it's your season, it's your season, keep on going, in the name of Jesus, it's your season. Open your arms and surrender to name. Open your arms and surrender to him. In the name of Jesus, it's your season. It's your season for increase in the name of Jesus. Open your arms and surrender to him. In the name of Jesus. In the, that's all right. Open wide. Open wide. In the, give it all to him. Turn it all over to him. Surrender all to him. In the name of Jesus. Saints out there ought to be praying. Saints out there ought to be praying. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I declare the decree. This is your year in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The burdens about the past. The struggle is about to be 
be over. It's real. It's in the name of Jesus, Amani. Sister Amani, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Sister Kia. In the name of Jesus. Sister Kia, let it go. You've been, you've been right there at the door. And every time you come to the door, something trying to pull you back. But not this year. Not this time. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. No more, no more, no more. You got to get up off of our young folks. The devil, you got no place up in here. You got no place. You're a defeated folk. You got to go in the name of Jesus. Ain't nobody scared of you, Satan. Ain't nobody scared of you. In the name of Jesus, get up out of here and get off our young folks. Hey, hey, the Tanya. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, you got to get that son of a shot.
y'all just, if y'all think that God is getting ready to do something in their life, come on, get my hands up and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You keep coming. After we have the benediction, you keep coming. You keep coming. God, God has shown me everybody. He showed up. But God, you keep coming. You keep coming. You keep coming. You keep coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now may the grace of God, the sweet command of the Holy Ghost, may it rest, rule, and abide with you. May God continue to walk with you, and may it continue to talk with you. And Brother Tom, may the Word of God change our lives. May the Word of God change. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say, Amen. Amen. Y'all come on. If you call, y'all hug each other. Come on back next Sunday. Y'all hug on each other.